So we are reading At the Dark End of the Street, Black Women, Rape and Resistance, A New History of the Civil Rights Movement from Rosa Parks to the Rise of Black Power by Danielle McGuire. And our sessions are, it started June 3rd and they last until July 29th. They are from 6.30 to 8. So number five says, on June 6, 1963, Dorothy Height, president of the National Council of Negro Women, NCNW, and Jean Noble, president of Delta Sigma Theta, went on the popular New York City radio station, WNEW, to announce an exclusive report documenting the first-hand accounts of brutality and sexual abuse of civil rights activists demonstrating in the South. They spoke of the Freedom Riders who came to Jackson, Mississippi in the summer of 1961 who were arrested and held in the most feared prison in the South, Parchman Penitentiary. Herded with cattle prods into exam rooms, men and women were ordered to strip naked for thorough body searches. Prison guards used gloves dipped in Lysol to conduct rough, painful vaginal searches on the women in the group. Bessie Turner of Clarksdale, Mississippi, told SNCC officials about her false arrest and vicious flogging, including being made to pull off her underwear and expose herself to the officer. He took a leather strap and hit her between her legs and made her expose her breasts. In, it was dangerous to organize in rural areas. Black and white female activists were raped by attendants in Mississippi jails. The jails in southwestern Georgia were considered the worst. Black women and men were in constant danger of sexual abuse and humili humiliation at the hands of southern police and prison officials. The Medical Community for Human Rights, who provided medical assistance during Freedom Summer, issued a report documenting the extreme sexual brutality of the police against the activists in Jackson, Mississippi where men's testicles were hit with clubs, women's dresses pulled up, breasts fondled, and vaginal exams given in front of, oogling audience, of an oogling audience. On October 4, 1963, Dorothy Hyde, Shirley Smith of the National Women's Committee for Civil Rights, Polly Cohen of the Citizens Committee for Children in New York, and Dr. Dorothy Farabee of Howard University flew to Selma, Alabama to hear the testimonies of 65 young women who had been brutalized, threatened, and sexually assaulted in a Dallas County jail. Exposing these atrocities was the one thing these women's organizations could do as women, use their institutional voices as weapons in the war against white supremacy. And the question for this section is, sexual violence against women and children never seems to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Do you think there are, are elements of white supremacy that remain in operation in the justice system? And what, if anything, could remedy that? Okay. <laughs> Benita, I just... Um, sent notes to your email account. You heard me? Yes, I think I have them. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, I definitely have them in front of me. Is there white? Okay. I have them. Is there white supremacy in the justice system, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, of course not. No, I mean it's mm. it's um it's riddled. It's riddled with white supremacy. Um, I guess really the harder question is is what can be done about it. Um, I don't know. Let me let me read the question again. Okay, sure. Sexual, sure. <laughs> sexual violence against women and children never seems to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Do you think there are elements of white supremacy that remain in operation 
in the justice system and what, if anything, could remedy that. Um, yes, definitely, um, there's white supremacy um, as, well, as well as elements of patriarchy, I would say. Um, and, you know, in, in the case of white supremacy, um, what we have seen really throughout this book um, is the, the belief on the part of white people that, um, that black women are less than human beings and really you can't rape them. You know, we're such whores and prostitutes and um, Jezebels and, you know, all of that, 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 you know, we just love, love, love sex so much um, that we can't be raped and that no matter, I'm, I, I hesitated because I was thinking about the story that we read. Um, was it this chapter? I don't remember if it was this chapter or the prior chapter where the old white man, where, where the wife. Um, yes, it's, it's this took chapter. The yes. child up to the old. It's this chapter. Took the child up to the old man's uh, bed. Little girl in, in, said, you know, said Mr. So and So wants to wish you a happy birthday, and she left the child there and went back downstairs. And um, the little girl talked about, you know, his pasty old thing, which you can just imagine how what a disgusting sight that must have been. Yeah. And, you know, and he proceeded to rape her, and. I think he's one of the ones that was asking her, don't you like it? Didn't you like it? Uh, is that right, George? I don't know. I may be mixing up stories. No, you so. are so correct. And when I read, and it was the way the author placed that, that anecdote in the story, you know, it was kind of, it was really raw in comparison to the young lady describing how she had empowered herself by joining the movement. But, whoa, how does a person... Yeah you know, overcome at 11 years old, you, you know, she, what the, the wife uh, brought her over to babysit the granddaughter or whatever, the grandchild, and then yes. you are abused. So the wife is working hand in hand with her husband yes. to dehumanize this child, yes. you know, as a sexual uh, uh, object. And then yeah. I, I think when she, uh, little, when they gave the little girl five dollars, right? Uh, yeah. And then she, she's walking out of the door, and the wife looks at her, and she's looking at the wife, and she knows, she knows she's right. wrong. Right. 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 You see. But um, but but wait a minute, for Nita. Hello, Joel and and Labib. I'm glad you got in. Hey. Um. But um. My, but you know, I just I just want to restate the point that 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 wife could participate in that activity, and that nasty old man could participate in that activity because they had a genuine belief and have a genuine belief that black women and black girls cannot be raped. You know that that we're not truly human beings experiencing pain. Uh, in the same way that other human beings do. We're on the question right now, Joel and Labib, of um, whether or not there is uh, continuing white supremacy in the justice system and, and what can be done about it on page three. Okay. Um, so, so, and I was making the point that, you know, yes, obviously there continues to be white supremacy as well as patriarchy, and, and that is why. Um, cases of rape uh, generally don't get prosecuted in the way that they should. Um, so I think I'll stop there, Georgette. Okay. Would anybody else like to chime in on the on this question? 
Oh, um, yeah, I was I was looking at that question a little bit earlier, and uh, and of course it's you know white supremacy uh, is a is a part of it, um, but a lot of economics has a lot to do with it as well. Um, you know, it kind of goes you know way back to uh, you know the war on. They were talking about a big discussion going on today. You know, uh, the uh, I don't know the name of the organization out in uh, Los Angeles, the largest Hispanic activist group they have in their convention out there this week, and they put a statistic on the board that uh, that talked about you know minorities. Uh, uh, that were arrested by the ATF at, uh, you know, targeted 91% of all their arrests is, uh, is minority. And uh, I have a book here called uh, Critical Issues in uh, Crime and Justice, uh, which says that even, even when women are are um, are being uh, arrested uh, for the same thing as men that's being arrested. And they go in and, and they're arrested at a at a higher rate, which you know we often felt that it was a lot less. But the name of the book I said is called Critical Issues in Crime and Justice. So uh, I think the gender factor and most definitely the social economic, you know. The person being poor has a lot to do with that. Okay. Thank you. Very powerful point. Vanita, Vanita, you were going to say something before I cut you off. I'm sorry. No, I, I just um, when I read that that section um, in the chapter, I, it actually brought me to tears. Mm. Um, it, it, I really, I just started to cry. I couldn't even read anymore. It was just sickening. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, you know these things happen all the time. It is not a new revelation, but, you know, it just never, I, just, I felt so sick inside. Mm -hmm. that, that's somebody's child. That could have been my daughter if I had one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I was just so sick. I was just so sick about that. Um, I don't know. You gotta. You really have to try to collect yourself because you can start thinking a lot of craziness. You know, it brings out so much emotion in you when you when you read and hear about those things. So mm -hmm. I, I just get too emotional. It's not good for me. I start thinking all kinds of craziness. <laughs> you know, oh. it just makes well, it hurt so you bad. Know, it just hurts. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, you know, we we talk all the time about. Black people are asleep. Everybody's asleep, really. But you know, uh, to the extent that our concern is is black people, so many of us are asleep. Um, but we are uh, asleep for all kinds of reasons. But one of the 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 things is we are not allowing ourselves to feel the depth of emotion um, that I believe we need to be feeling uh, about our, our, our history and our present situation. You know, the other piece of this question is what can be done about it. And, you know, nothing can be done about it while you're asleep. Um, Very true. And we... we, we 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 don't want to feel the emotion for very you know I was just I was having a very brief Facebook discussion today where um, one of my good Facebook buddies uh, Agi Tayemba was asking are there any um, are there li any leaders young that we see among young people on the cover of or Sada or, you know, people, the point that I was trying to make was that, 
you know, we really have to have leadership in all areas, in every field of endeavor, not just um, not just the mass movement kinds of of leaders that we used to have. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, I kind of lost where I was going with this. So somebody else talk. Labib, I know you have something <laughs> to say. What is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, just just to kind of um, uh, kind of tie uh, uh, together the thoughts that I, I heard um, from everybody here, um, I think you know we all agree that our present day situation, um, you know, as serious and as traumatic as it is, has a history. And it has a history uh, uh, that that's that's uh, began really uh, here in America uh, with the slave trade and the making of the slave. Uh, when we were captured and brought here, we were a a free people. We were a human people. Uh, we were a people who had a, a sense of self, a knowledge of self a sense of family and a knowledge of family and a sense of community and a knowledge of that community and uh, you know certain uh, laws, if you will, or mores by which we all agreed upon and we all followed. And it was uh, the slave making process uh, that broke the human ties of dignity and self-respect and intelligence and uh, um, uh, protecting one another and uh, living up to certain values. It was the uh, slave uh, making process that, that broke those ties. Uh, and, and, and that slave making process was a very brutal, make no mistake, a very brutal process um, by which uh, black Women were turned against black men. Black men were turned against black women. Uh, lights, as time went on, light, lighter skinned blacks uh, were, were turned against darker skinned blacks and darker skinned blacks against uh, lighter skinned blacks and that whole dynamic. So that there was created an, an insecurity um, amongst ourselves. So that, so that uh, to this day, we don't trust each other. To this day, we 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 have a a trauma about opening up about this this process that made us who we are to this day. Um, so we've been unable to engage seriously and continuously in a healing process. This is one of the points that were brought up. Um, we are we are still living the trauma because the conditions really that 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 broke our humanity are still breaking our humanity today. And, and it starts very, very early in, our, in, in each of our lives. And unless we have, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to uh, have been born into a, a situation of protectiveness and love and intelligence, um, we virtually then have no protection against the greater um, factors that come in, uh, into play very early in our lives. Uh, for, for example, um, if you have a, uh, a mother, an expecting mother, uh, who does not have knowledge of self and knowledge of health and so on and so forth, and doesn't have the means and the resources to, to uh, properly care for herself that, that she is now with child, uh, then, then those factors adversely affect the child that she's uh, about to give birth to. Uh, it increases the mortality rate. It increases the morbidity rate. Um, and then if, if the child is born uh, into, uh, you know, let's just say, generally speaking, a, a, a uh, poverty kind of a situation where, again, li resources are limited, so on and so forth, then the child, uh, uh, the opportunity for that child to grow up health, healthy physically, emotionally, psychologically, and, 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 and educationally um, also become uh, limited or, or uh, 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 restricted. And then you now enter that child into a public school situation, you know, nine times out of ten, this is a situation. And that public school system 
uh, is a part of us of that 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 uh, human breaking uh, institution, um, then that 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 child is further not protected during uh, a critical development uh, developmental period in that child's life. Uh, so, long story short, uh, as as we evolve in our lifetimes through the generations. Um, you know, virtually we've had no healing process to the trauma that was inflicted upon us initially under the, 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 the slave making process and then under Jim Crow uh, and, and, and then right up, you know, to, the, to this day, we haven't had a healing uh, uh, process. Uh, we haven't had a, a, an education process by which we can be made aware of who we are currently and how we became who we, uh, we are. And we don't have a, 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 an education process that tells us about who we were before we, we came into the hands of, of, of the wolves in which we're, we're in today. So we're, we're ill-equipped and we're kept ill-equipped to deal effectively yeah. with our condition. So it's not a wonder that we're, not, that we're still stuck in it and, and looking around and, and wondering how yeah. we're going to get out of it, you see. And then as far as, far as to uh, Vanita's point, just I'll close with this. Um, the trauma aspect that that that, that Vanita uh, you know so vividly expresses, um, we because we don't we haven't received the healing, we we don't know how to properly deal with our problems. So what we do is we project our problems onto our brother and onto our sister, and we don't we don't we don't even see our brother and our sister as such, you know. Uh, but we, 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 we see them as, you know, the nigger, excuse my language, and the bitch. We see them as the lowest creatures, subhuman, just the way the system of human breaking did to us and intended for us to carry it out through the generations. And I interject uh, the, the little booklet, uh, uh, Willie Lynch, the, the Willie Lynch letter, The Making of a Slave. I refer, I, I refer to that because the intention... Uh, in that in that uh, human breaking process was to ensure through the generations that then we the 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 the, the broken human beings would uh, continue the process of breaking each other, and we yeah, see that happening today with all the violence that's going on in in, in the communities where we're uh, in 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 concentrated numbers, you know, uh, and in the families where yeah. you know we're we're turning on each other. You see, and that was the intention of, 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 of uh, you know, the, the, the human breaking process or the making of the slave process. So, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I, I, remembered, I remembered my point just as soon as you started talking, Labine, okay. and you said the word, and you said the word history yeah. because um, the dialogue that I was referring to on Facebook someone had said, um, you know, was there anybody like a Gil Noble and they didn't understand how we had lost the program. I don't, I don't think mm -hmm. the program was national, but it, it, was, it was in New York, but it was a wonderful um, educational Absolutely. program yeah. hosted by Gil Noble for many decades uh, and I called I Like It in. Is. I, t I tuned in every Sunday with w w virtually without fail. For that, for that no, I, I, I did too for a lot of years. And um, um, after he passed, um, Simo Tap and James McIntosh, um, uh, Simo Tap works on, uh, I think it's committee something something for media images <laughs> favorable to black people and um, they put on a march outside of ABC to uh, I, I think they wanted Elambe Breath to be the new host but to continue um, with the like it is name and in the like it is spirit um, but ABC was not having it and um, so they started a show called here and now. If I may, you know that goes, um, you know, right into a specific playbook.
that I've always um, heard um, of my cohorts would say that, you know, when there is a, if we're talking about the justice system and effective policing in our community and what can we do about white supremacy, you know, if the American people would, if they were looking for the bang for the buck, and, you know, we literally, I think, you know, the numbers are something like in the justice system, we spend anywhere from 600 to $800 billion a year for a failed justice system. Now, if you look at the return on investment for something like that, and, you know, if you look at the corporatocracy and the industrialized prison system, so is it a... But see, it's not, it's not a failed justice system. Correct. Correct. Uh, so, and that's yeah. what I think we have to yeah. understand. A yeah. lot of people are getting paid out of that bucket. Yeah, for one thing. yeah, but you know, for uh, if I, if you if you're looking at it from the standpoint of of the citizen, you know, right. uh, I, I you know, it's just like having insurance. You know, um, you say when you ask someone, do you have good insurance? You say, yeah, I had insurance for 20 years. Well, have you used it? You know, when you truly have to enter the justice system, you're going to find out that it's really something that may not work for you. you. You know what I mean? The justice system is supposed to be justice. It's supposed to work for the citizen. I'm not talking about the industrial complex. That's not what I'm talking about. So the question was, you know, how can we change it? Well, I've, I've you know, and I, I was in a class that, you know, we had a, a long debate about, you know, criminal justice, the justice system, blah, 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 blah. And you know, and we had to come up with a hypothesis of what can we do to the justice system to make it work. Well, one of my theories had been is that, one, you have too many policing systems that are too different. Every town and hamlet that you go to, they have their own set of rules. They have their own procedures. You know, any Joe Blow can become a policeman. You know, you have people that, now we're talking about women uh, and children who are being victimized. You have policemen that have domestic violence. How can we have a person that covers, that carries a gun to have domestic violence? I was in the military. I remember in 2000, uh, I don't want to take a long time. I remember in, in 2000, the military had a, plur had a purge of every person that was in the military that had domestic violence. They lost their badge and they had to be retrained or kicked out. You know, that. so you're looking at standards and ethics, you know, what are the standards, the ethics, and the culture? You know, what is the training that goes on in a police? Now, I know my theory was, and my solution was, you had a minimum standard federally for anybody in any town, any municipal that wanted to be a policeman. They had to be trained in a federally, uh, federal, a federally, federally standardized uh, policing system. And then you go from there. They had a federal ban pay grade. They wasn't federal, but they had a minimum standard. So if you had minimum standard of pay, you had minimum standard of training, and you had minimum standard uh, of ethics that you are background checks in the whole nine yards, the, the citizen would get a better policeman. I get a more qualified. Yeah, but, but Joe, you know, I mean, we're not in Kansas anymore. We are dealing mm -hmm. with but a really think, changed like said, situation on a lot of fronts. Yeah, but, but, but see, but you see, the thing about it, you said, so you said, what can we do about it? Yeah. You know, I'm saying, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. What can you do? Yeah. You can't do anything about it unless you have a certain standard. You know what I mean? Right. So, so the police system that you have now, it is a, you're just like we said, the young man, the man in New York. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they, they say, you know, they're saying that, hey, that tactic they used was was banned for for 20 years. So what causes that? So you have another part of it called nepotism. You know, so what can you do with the nepotism? You know, uh, I, I don't. Just, I, you know, there I'm was gonna, another. Gonna, there was yeah. another situation this week down in in Florida. I think it was with like a 67 year old woman who um, tried to call the 911 to say somebody was trying to break in her house and the police got there and they said they did a look around and um, 
they didn't see anything so they left I think it was 11 hours later that her family showed up and found her sprawled out dead uh, in her backyard having been raped neck broken you know all kind of stuff and um, and the police department said well you know we, we followed SOP we did a pretty good job yeah and, and that's the thing about it see the SOP the, the SOP that that particular police station had you know so you know so my thing is you know say how can we have a better what can we do about a uh, white supremacist police force first you got to start with training you know what I mean I mean you know if you if people are not trained properly I already know the system I'm not I'm not naive I know the system that we have I already know it. I, you know, I'm a black man. I drive down the street every day. You know, I, I already know that. But the question is, what can we do about it? We have have to have more of us in the justice system. You know what I mean? I mean, it's the a lot of people say, well, you know, it's the, it's the only system that you have. You know what I mean? So what can you do to make it better? It start with ethics. It start with culture. It start with black folk. With black folk in our own community being snitches you know what i mean you tell if somebody come in this neighborhood that i live in now they don't supposed to be there me personally i might stand with my gun in the doorway but i call the police you understand what i'm saying you have to be you have to take responsibility for your particular street in your particular neighborhood so those norms that we have that you know we're not going to tell on somebody we see a strange car or we see a strange person or something happen, I think we have to start with ourselves. It's how we're gonna to have to Well yeah, but I mean, I mean, you know, as as Lebe pointed out though, the 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 destruction um, of our culture has been so thorough. And so systematic. complete I don't, so systematic, I don't, I don't, so effective. I that, that even that even having more black people in certain positions is certainly no guarantee that we are going to be treated um, with any higher level of humanity than any other white supremacist would would do. And but so I, we have to, to factor that in. Go ahead. I'm right. sorry. And I factor it in. I, and you know, I love the debate. As I think is is very helpful. And I factor that in with the, with the same thing, the very same area that I'm sitting in in South Carolina. I believe the slave he told it, and he somehow made it as well. So this is our this is our struggle that still yet continue. And I'm not preaching because I know you all y'all already know that. It's just it's just something that we haven't gotten there yet, and we just have to continue. To do away. I don't think that the personally, I don't think the destruction of us have been as as overplayed as they like to see it. Only thing I see is a lot of us on TV about a lot of bad things. You know, I go to functions with thousands of people with a lot of black folk driving Bentleys and Rolls Royces and traveling and flying. <laughs> so somebody somewhere is doing well. And I looked around me, I was like, wow, somebody is doing well. So I think that a lot of things that we see, a lot of things that we see, uh, what we see portrayed on TV is still what, uh, what what my brother was saying is the perception that a lot of people aren't looking at. Because it looks like to me, the scramble to make us even look worse is more intense with the te with with the television. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think you have yeah. to look. I think well, you have to look. You have to look around you, you have to look around yourself, and you look around and you see, well, how many black folk are doing good, and how many, I'm a DJ, I do, I've done hundreds of family re reunions, I see the same makeup in the family reunions, I see the part of the family that's doing good, I see the family that's doing bad, I see the army brother that's married to the Korean chick, I see the crazy uncle that's dancing crazy. <coughs> You understand what I'm saying? But I still see the family structure, irregardless of what's going on in the, in the family reunion. So uh, do I sound optimistic about it? Yeah. I mean, it's been, uh, uh, but it's not as desolate as I think. Now, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. 
But I don't think it's as bad as they would like for us to believe. Yeah. I, um, let me let me let me just make one more point, and then I'm going to send it back to Georgette uh, because Ge and remind Georgette that you know you have to tell us to shut up, or we <laughs> oh, never <okay>. will. <laughs> oh, but it was good. It was good. The best. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. You know, I, I I just wanted to say somewhere along the line that. Um, I think it might have been a reaction to something that that Labib said about um, uh, anyway I don't know but my point is that it has never occurred to me that we could depend on white people or people that that we identify as the cause of you know most of our problems. Um, it has never occurred to me that we could look to them or rely on them for any level of, of assistance, of reparations, apology, uh, uh, resource, you know, anything. Um, and so therefore it has always seemed clear to me that whatever progress we're going to make as a people is going to be incumbent upon us to do it for ourselves. But you know, when somebody like a Bill Cosby says something along that line, um, it is not taken well. <laughs> well, that, that, that's, be, that's because uh, um, uh, Michelle, uh, you know that last part of your statement is is, be, is because there are a number of us who have who have uh, uh, inculcated uh, self hatred again, uh, which is one of one of the results of of the breaking of the human being. When you are a human being, you love yourself. When you're a human being, you respect yourself. When you're a human being, you you know yourself. Uh, so when when those ties uh, have been broken. Uh, you know the opposite is 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 is, is in effect. Um, mm -hmm. One one of one of the uh, uh, th uh, things you said, uh, Michelle, um, regarding Bill, Bill Cosby. From what I understand, uh, he had uh, offered to put up some money to buy uh, um, the rights to the Like It Is program, so oh, as really? uh, to to make that that uh, those those uh, presentations. Available to uh, every public school, at least uh, in New York City area, in the five boroughs, and to extend it nationally, uh, because he uh, was very clear in the value of um, the topics and discussions right. that uh, uh, Gil Noble had in, in the Like It Is program. I, I, to this day, I don't I know. I've never heard that. You know, yeah, I don't know the success of, of that acquisition, but I do know that uh, uh, when when um, Gil was in the hospital. Uh, it was it was put forward. And it was put forward to ABC. It was put forward to the uh, Gil Noble family and so on and so forth. Um, the the other thing, just real quick on, on what the brother uh, 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 said here about uh, you know the SOP, uh, where the police departments are are concerned. You know, I I, I I hear I hear that and I agree with that. You know, certainly that's that's an aspect. Um, uh, to be, you know, to be looked at seriously. Uh, who, 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 who's a, a police officer, and what's the, what's the standard for for how they were were selected and became such? And then there also has to be, you know, a check and balance within that system that that um, uh, looks looks after uh, when when policing goes wrong, like in in the case we have here in, in what was the Staten Island just uh, over over the weekend or not too long ago last weekend. Uh, with the brother that was uh, choked to death, uh, kind of thing. So the, you know, th th those kind of procedures are in place. You know, um, however, we're still uh, facing what we're facing on the street, which is you know black annihilation, high uh, uh, black incarceration, and, and 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 so on and so forth. So we have to uh, continue to look at you know how we're going to solve that problem. And I and I think that a, a big part of it. Uh, is is education of self, mm -hmm. uh, and then also education of the enemy, 
so that we may be able to identify the enemy as such and behave intelligently with regard to dealing with the enemy, uh, which, which means we don't take the en enemy as friend. So to more to your point, Michelle, we wouldn't be looking for, you, you, you know, you, you said it yourself, it, uh, we wouldn't be looking to our enemy for help because we know that our help is not going to come from that corner. Uh, it, it would be like uh, what Malcolm said, if you're in, in war and then the, 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 um, the, the general of the, of, of, of the enemy's army is, is pinning uh, uh, medals on, on the general of your army. And you have to wonder what, what's the relationship between those two. They can't, you, you, you know, you cannot be friends with enemies. Uh, and I think that uh, part, of, part of the reason why, why we look to, you know, uh, uh, white folks and to the white institutions um, uh, for, for uh, our help uh, is because we, we fail to uh, appreciate or fail to have a, a clear knowledge and acceptance of that knowledge that, that they are enemies and the institutions that they set up to uh, first of all put us in the condition that we're in and then second of all to maintain the condition in which, in which we're in um, those institutions are, are enemies to us they're, well, they're not you know, friends to us. I agree. I agree, yeah. I agree that. I, I agree that enemies exist. I agree that some institutions. But I, I draw, I draw a caution when I look at a whole group of people as, as an enemy. For instance, I believe that some things. I believe that the institutional, the institutional programs that are uh, in place as capitalism in its purest form is a bigger enemy to the American way for white, black, blue, or green than it is of a color of someone's skin. You know, I believe, I believe in yeah, that. I, I, I believe. I, I don't, 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 don't want to be mistaken. I'm sorry, brother. I don't want to yeah. be mistaken to, to, to make a, a, a blanket statement with regard to race. Right. Um, exactly. I, 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 simply, I simply. Go ahead. I, I, I simply, uh, you know, want to draw the correlation, really, you know, that we, we, we cannot escape from, that, you know, they, they are, white folks are, you know, um, as opposed to uh, black folks or as opposed to Native Americans or as opposed to the Chinese, what not, what have you. Uh, it's white folks who, uh, out of their mindset, was, was germinated this idea of white supremacy, okay? And and it, the the really the premise of it, uh, as as Dr. Francis Cross Wilson uh, discussed in great detail in her book uh, the ISIS Papers, um, the genesis of of white supremacy is their fear of what what public enemy calls the black planet. They understand that that in genetic time, white folks would not be. They would be absorbed by the more dominant uh, genetic trait that exists on this planet. Uh, there are more people on this planet that, that are, are, are non-white than there are white people. So if, but, if no, there were not a barrier, no, 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 hang on a second, if there were not a barrier, be, be, be it a man-made barrier, an artificial barrier, if there were not a barrier to the natural process of things, in genetic time, white folks would be absorbed, okay? And so the 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 the, the uh, what do you want to call it the the um, the natural instinct of a creature is self-preservation. So to, to stem the tide of their own annihilation, eventual annihilation, they erected um, artificial barriers to stem that tide, i.e. The ideology of white supremacy, i.e., the institution of slavery, i.e., the, the the institutions of war, um, uh, and 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 uh, the uh, the, uh, the institutions of incarceration and so on and so forth, the institution of poverty. Um, but I mean, but, but I mean, I, I think just, my, my main yeah. my, my my main point with with all of that is that that sort of that sort of thinking uh, in my in my humble opinion it totally misses the mark of capitalism 
Capitalism don't care about none of that. It don't care about white people. It don't care about the bottom feeding white people that that has this little race war. They you're, care you're, about. You're, you're, they you're, care. You're, let me give my point. No, about, I, I, no, they, they care, they no, care I, about. I, they care I, about I, only I, the dollar. Yeah, they, but that, so the racism thing, like you said, and I agree, it is a distractor. It's the byproduct to keep the game rolling. But I always, and this is this is what if you listen to what I always, uh, what I do is that I want to know in this book that we are covering, I look at first what is the social economic impact of everything that we talk about. Because if you look at the social economic impact of everything, why are people going to prison? Well, they're going to prison because there's a prison there's a, there's a prison system based upon capitalism, not based upon rehabilitation. It's because somebody found out that they can make money off of it. So, black people are caught up in it, brown people are caught up in it, and white folk are caught up in it. However, there is a racial component that we cannot deny. And, we're, and we cannot deny that. But what is the bottom line of all of it? Pure capitalism. That's, on, that's my only point. And that's all right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. It's,